friends, I am Romila Lemos, Assistant Professor, Department of Forensic Biology, Institute of Forensic Science, Mumbai. Today's topic of our discussion and learning is all about Forensic Serology, Part 7. We will be studying the following modules today. Module 1, Introduction to Bloodstain Pattern. Module 2, History of Bloodstain Pattern Interpretation. Module 3, Size, Shape and Directionality of Bloodstain Pattern. Module 4, Categories of Blood Spatter. Module 5, Categories of Blood Spatter Continued. Module 6, Interpretation of Bloodstain Pattern. And Module 7, Conclusion. The geometric interpretation of human bloodstain patterns at a crime scene is in no way a new idea, but it has acquired much greater recognition over the past several decades. Bloodstain pattern interpretation should be viewed as a forensic tool that assists the investigator or the forensic scientist to better understand what took place and could not have taken place during a bloodshed event. The information obtained from the interpretation of a blood stain may assist in apprehending a suspect or corroborate a witness's statement or assist in interrogating the suspects and allow for the reconstruction of past events. But most importantly, it can also help exonerate an accused. The interpretation of blood stains and their patterns has been documented in books, journals and articles for centuries. Herbert Leon MacDonald, a prominent blood stain analyst from Corning, New York, conducted a worldwide literature search over the past several years and compiled an extensive bibliography of over 550 references dating back as far as trials held in London in the year 1514. Dr. Edward Piotrowski, an assistant at the Institute for Forensic Medicine in Poland, carried out extensive research in the subject in his work. Concerning origin, shape, direction and distribution of the blood stains. Following head wounds caused by blows that was published in Vienna in 1895. Original research and experimentation with blood stains and patterns was also done by the French scientist Dr. Victor Balzhazard and his associates who presented the paper in 1939. The use of bloodstain pattern interpretation as a recognized forensic discipline in the modern era dates back to 1955 when Dr. Paul Kirk of the University of California at Berkeley submitted an affidavit of his examination of bloodstain evidence and findings in the case of the State of Ohio versus Samuel Shepard. This was a significant milestone in the recognition of bloodstain evidence by the American legal system. Herbert Leon MacDonald received a grant from the Law Enforcement Assistance Administration and has conducted research to recreate blood stains observed at crime scenes. His initial publication entitled Flight Characteristics of Human Blood and Stain Patterns appeared in 1971. MacDonald followed that publication with his laboratory manual on the geometric interpretation of human blood stain evidence in 1973. Since then, he and others have conducted numerous basic and advanced bloodstain interpretation courses throughout the United States and abroad. 
articles have appeared in scientific journals and additional texts have been published over the past 20 years. The study of bloodstain pattern interpretation has also been featured in numerous crime novels, forensic television programs and the news media. This exposure has increased the public awareness of this important forensic discipline. The geometry of individual bloodstains allows the analyst to determine their direction of flight prior to impacting an object. This is done by examination of the edge characteristics of individual stains. The narrow end of an elongated blood stain usually points in the direction of travel. After the directionality of several blood stains has been determined, an area or point of convergence may be established by simply drawing straight lines through the long axis of the blood stains. The point where these lines converge represents the relative location of the blood source in a two-dimensional perspective on the x and the y-axis. This area of convergence will be an area and not an exact point. The point or area of origin or the location of the blood source in a three-dimensional perspective may also be determined. A mathematical relationship exists between the width and the length of an elliptical blood stain that allows for the calculation of the angle of impact for the original spherical drop of blood. This calculation is accomplished by the measurement of the width and the length of the blood stain. After establishing the angle of impact for each of the blood stains, the three-dimensional origin of the blood stain pattern can be determined. The calculated area of origin is always higher than the actual origin of the blood stains because of the gravitational attraction affecting the spatters while in flight. This gives the analyst the maximum possible height of the blood source. In practical terms, the analyst is attempting to determine whether a victim was standing, lying down or sitting in a chair when the blood was spattered. This method for determining the location of a blood source is not always necessary. For instance, if no blood spatter appears on a table top or chair seat but spatter associated with a gunshot is found on the underside of the table and the chair, the obvious conclusion is that the victim was on or near the floor when shot. Spattered blood is defined as a random distribution of blood stains that vary in size and may be produced by a variety of mechanisms. The quantity of spatters produced by a single mechanism can vary significantly depending on the quantity of the available blood. The amount of available blood and the amount of force applied to the blood affect the size range of the spatters. Spatter is created when sufficient force is available to overcome the surface tension of the blood. The amount of force applied to a source of blood and the size of the resulting spatter vary considerably with gunshot, beating and stabbing events. A single small stain does not constitute a spatter pattern. The conventional method of classifying impact spatter patterns is based on the correlation between the velocity of the object striking the blood and the size of the resulting spatters that fall into three categories. The first one is passive blood stains. 
A passive blood stain is formed due to bleeding from wounds and the blood is deposited on the surface by the influence of the force of gravity alone. For example, a drip stain is formed when a falling drop of blood from an exposed wound or a blood bearing object lands on a surface. If a blood source is moving, a drip trail is formed. A drip trail is formed. A drip pattern, which is distinct from a drip stain, is formed when a liquid drips into another liquid, where one or both of the liquids are blood. As a result, secondary spatter patterns are generated. As the dropping distance of the blood increases, the number of secondary spattered stains usually increases and the size of these stains decreases. An approximate estimation of the dropping distance is possible. A splash pattern is formed when a volume of blood spills onto a surface. Splash patterns usually have large stains surrounded by numerous peripheral elongated blood stains. A flow pattern is caused by the movement of a large volume of blood on a surface either due to the gravity or due to the movement of the target such as a victim or post-bottom disturbance. A pool is a blood stain resulting from the accumulation of liquid blood on a surface. Sometimes air bubbles in the blood may cause a bubble ring pattern if blood is coagulated Gelatinous blood clots can be observed. Additionally, a serum stain which consists of the liquid portion of the blood after a clot is formed may also be present. The second type of blood stain pattern are transfer blood stains. A transfer blood stain based on Swig stain which is the scientific working group on blood stain pattern analysis is defined as a blood stain resulting from contact between a blood bearing surface and another surface. For example, a swipe pattern is a blood stain pattern resulting from the transfer of blood from a blood bearing surface onto another surface with characteristics that indicate relative motion between the two surfaces. As such, bloody impressions can provide information about the shape, the size and the pattern of the objects such as finger ridges, hands and shoe soles. A wipe pattern is an altered blood stain pattern resulting from an object moving through a pre-existing wet blood stain. A perimeter stain a type of white pattern is a blood stain that is disturbed before it is dried but it maintains the peripheral characteristics of the original stain. Perimeter stain patterns can be useful for the estimation of sequential events of acts. The pattern can also be used to estimate a time frame between the time of bleeding and the subsequent act. However, the drying time of a blood drop varies based on the surrounding conditions. Therefore, it is necessary to carry out a crime scene reconstruction under similar conditions to those of the scene to make such estimations. The third type of blood stain patterns are the projected blood stains. A projected blood stain is formed when a volume of blood is deposited on a surface under a pressure or a force that is greater than the force of gravity. For example, an impact pattern is formed when an object strikes liquid blood. Gunshot spatter includes both forward spatter from the exit wound and back spatter from the entrance wound. A forward spatter is formed when blood drops travel from an exit wound in the same direction as the projectile, while a back spatter is formed when the blood drops 
travel from an entry wound in the opposite direction of a projectile. Gunshot spatter will vary depending on the caliber of the gun, where the victim is struck and whether the bullet exits the body, distance between the victim and the gun and the location of the victim relative to walls, floors and objects. Typically, forward spatter is a fine mist and back spatter is larger, containing fewer drops. A cast of pattern is formed when blood drops are released from a moving blood-bearing object. A cast off results when an object swung in an arc flings blood onto nearby surfaces. This occurs when an assailant swings the blood-stained object back before inflicting another blow. Analysts can tell the direction of the impacting object by the shape of the spatter. This is because the tails point in the direction of the motion. Counting the hours can also show the minimum number of blows delivered. Some spatter patterns are often associated with wound penetrated by a projectile. Sometimes, internal bleeding caused by an injury may block the airway. An expiration pattern is formed when blood is forced by airflow through the trachea and out of the nose or mouth. Expirated spatter is usually caused by blood from an internal injury mixing with air from the lungs being expelled through the nose, mouth or an injury to the airways or lungs. Expirated spatter tends to form a very fine mist due to the pressure exerted by the lungs moving air out of the body. Small air bubbles in the drops of blood are typically found in this type of spatter. An arterial spurt pattern is associated with wounds damaging arterial blood vessels where blood stains are driven by arterial pressure. Although the shape of arterial patterns varies, these patterns usually have a series of large spurts with fluctuations corresponding to the systolic and the diastolic blood pressures. Arterial spray refers to the spurt of blood released when a major artery is severed. The blood is propelled out of the breech blood vessel by the pumping of the heart and often forms an arcing pattern consisting of large individual stains with a new pattern created for each time the heart pumps. At a crime scene, if the projectile of blood stains is blocked by an object, a void pattern is formed which exhibits an area where there is an absence of blood surrounded by continuously distributed blood stains. Void areas or patterns are absences of blood stains in otherwise continuous patterns of staining. These patterns are commonly seen where items have been removed from an area previously spattered with blood. This permits the analyst to establish sequencing and identify the alterations within a crime scene. At a scene containing a considerable amount of spattered blood, the void areas may be utilized to recognize the general location where the spatter event occurred. The identification and interpretation of spattered blood are significant for the following reasons. 1. Spattered blood may allow the determination of an area or location of the origin of the blood source. 2. If found on a suspect's clothing, spattered blood may place that person at the scene of a violent altercation. 3. Spattered blood may allow the determination of the mechanism by which the pattern was created. Let us look at how the blood stain pattern interpretation occurs. First one to determine the velocity of blood droplets. The sizes of blood stains are affected by the external force that is directly applied on a blood source. 
increasing the energy of the external force will reduce the surface tension thus decreasing the size of the droplets. Since these travelling blood droplets are driven by the energy derived from the external force, the higher the energy, the higher the velocities of the droplets. Blood stains can be divided into three categories based on different travelling speeds. Low velocity impact spatter is formed when a blood droplet is travelling at less than 1.5 meters per second. The resulting stains are usually greater than 4 mm in diameter. As the travelling speed of blood droplets increases, the size of the spatter stain decreases. Medium velocity impact spatter is formed when a blood source is subjected to a force associated with beatings or stabbings. The resulting stains range from 1 to 4 mm in diameter. High velocity impact spatter is formed when a blood source is subjected to a force associated with shooting using firearms. The resulting stains are usually less than 1 mm in diameter. The second type of interpretation is determining the directionality of the stains. In this analysis, the effects of the directionality of the spatter stains projected are examined. Swick stain defines the directionality to be the characteristics of a blood stain that indicates the direction the blood was moving at the time of deposition. This analysis is applicable when the blood source is projected onto a surface at an angle of between 0 degree and 90 degree. Under this condition, the resulting spatter stain is an elongated ellipse, which is known as the parent stain. Additionally, satellite stains in the vicinity of the parent stain can be observed. As defined by Swick stain, a satellite stain is a smaller blood stain that originated during the formation of the parent stain as a result of a blood impacting surface. More importantly, a spine is observed which is the pointed edge away from the parent stain. When such a pattern is observed, the pointed end of the spine always points towards the direction of the travel of the blood stains. The third interpretation that can be done with the blood stain patterns is determining the angle of impact. Swick stain defines the angles of impact to be the acute angle alpha relative to the plane of a target at which a blood drop strikes the target. The shapes of the spatter stains are affected by the angle of impact. When a blood drop lands on the surface at a perpendicular angle that is 90 degree, a circular parent stain is formed, where the length and the width of the stain are equal. When a blood drop is projected onto a surface at an angle between 0 degree and 90 degree, the stain is elongated. As the impact angle decreases, the shape of the spatter stain is more elongated in which the length of the stain is always greater than the width. It is observed that the ratio of the width and the length of the parent stain is proportional to the sign of the impact angle, which is summarized in the following trigonometric equation that is sin alpha equals to W width divided by L the length. In this occasion, a is the angle of impact, L is the length of the parent stain on the major axis and W is the width of the parent stain on the minor axis. Thus, the angle of impact can be determined based on the relationship between the length and the width of the stain. The measurement of the stain's axis is critical to the accuracy of the calculation of the angle of impact. To produce accurate and reproducible measurements, blood stain pattern analysis softwares can be used, 
which superimpose a scaled close-up image of an individual blood stain and calculates the angle of impact. The fourth interpretation that can be done is determining the area of origin. Swick stain defines the area of origin to be the three-dimensional location from which spatter originated. Using simple trigonometry, the area of origin can be determined based on the measurements from multiple elongated spatter stains. This can be accomplished by using the string method or the tangent method. In the string method, multiple that is approximately two dozen well formed elongated spatter stains are selected for analysis. For each stain, the angle of impact is calculated. A piece of string is then connected between the stain and a surface with one end of the string precisely attached to the spatter stain. The path of the string indicating the trajectory of the stain is set using a protractor based on the calculated angle of impact. This process is repeated until all the stains that have been selected are processed. For a spatter pattern generated from a single impact event, the strings converge. The area where the strings meet is the area of origin. In the tangent method, the directionality of a single stain is determined first. A line is then back projected through the major axis of the blood stain. For example, impact event approximately two dozen stains are processed to determine the area of convergence. Based on the Swick stains definition, the area of convergence is the area containing the intersections generated by lines drawn through the long axis of individual stains that indicates in two dimensions the location of the blood source. Next, the angle of impact of each stain is calculated. The distance from the blood stain to the area of convergence is measured. The height of the area of origin is calculated using the tangent function as h equals to d tan alpha. In this equation, alpha is the angle of impact, h is the height of the area of origin and d is the distance from the spatter stain to the area of convergence. The goal of this chapter was to acquaint the learner with the basic concepts of blood stain pattern interpretation. The interpretation of blood stain patterns can become very complex depending on individual case factors. Experimentation with specific case variables can be very critical and should not be overlooked. A major drawback is oversimplification of this complex discipline. It is unfortunate that people fail to adhere to the sound scientific practices and rely more on speculation than on the fact. To become proficient in blood stain pattern analysis, one must have the basic understanding of mathematics, physics, scientific method and a great deal of practical experience. Anyone working in a field where blood stains may later be used to incriminate or exonerate a suspect will find solid working knowledge of the blood stain pattern interpretation, what it can and cannot do. I will again meet you in another session with more learning lectures in coming episodes. So till then, keep learning. Thank you.